Okay, here is part two of this ridiculously hard chain rule worksheet that we worked on in class today. Now, in part one of the video, we did these four problems. Uh, so here in part two, we'll do four more. So I'll pick it up with this one, the fifth one, where we're asked to find the derivative of this mess, which I rewrote and color-coded to kind of emphasize all the different chain rules, hidden inside chain rules. Um, so what I see when I look at this, the outermost function is something is being squared. So that's what's in green there. So I'm the, taking the derivative of something squared, that's not green. I use the power rule, take that two, bring it down in front, and leave everything else alone, and then subtract one from the exponents. Now there's a one here. And instead of taking the derivative of x squared and calling it two x, I'm taking the derivative of this mess squared, so I'm gonna call it two times this mess. Specifically, the tangent of two x squared plus 3x squared divided by x cubed plus x squared to the one third to the one half. I think I got all of those. Um, so what I've done is I've taken the derivative of the green part. So now you look at this and pretend the green's not there. The next layer is the red part. So I have to take the derivative of the red part to apply the chain rule. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. Well, the derivative of tangent x is secant squared of x, but I don't have tangent of x, I have tangent of some mess. So its derivative is secant squared of that mess, specifically 2x squared plus 3x squared, x cubed plus x squared. Try to make sure to write all the parentheses. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I've taken care of the tangent part now. Um, but there's another chain rule hidden inside that. The next layer is written in blue here. It's saying we're taking the square root of something. In other words, something raised up to the one half power. When you take the derivative of something raised up to the one half power, use the power rule like we did here. Take that exponent and bring it down in front. If it were x to the one half, we'd say it's one half x to the negative one half. But it's not x to the one half. It's this mess in here raised up to the one half, specifically 2x squared plus 3x, quantity squared, divided by x cubed plus x squared to the 1 third power. What I've now done is taken care of the blue layer, but inside that is another layer. It's in purple. So what I'm going to have to do is multiply that by the derivative of, now you're staring at this original thing, but only seeing the purple and the orange. I see a quotient rule. So I'm going to have to multiply this by, I'm going to apply the quotient rule here, f prime would be the derivative of the numerator here. The derivative of the numerator is 4x from this guy and 2 times 3x to the 1 power times 3 for this guy. This is just the derivative of the top. So this is f prime. And then I'm going to multiply that by the bottom. x to the third plus x squared to the 1 third f prime g. If you're wondering where these things came from, there's actually a chain rule hidden in here. Um, if this were just x squared, I'd say it's 2x. But it's not. It's 3x all squared. So I say it's 2 times 3x. But then I'm not done. I have to take the derivative of the inside function. The derivative of 3x is 3. f prime g. I'm using the quotient rule here. So from that, I need to subtract g prime times f. g prime is the derivative of the bottom. On the bottom here, I got another chain rule. Outside function is something is being raised up to the one-third power. So I take that using the power rule, bring that one-third down in front, and then subtract one from the exponent, and which makes it negative two-thirds. If it were just x, I'd have negative I'd have one-third x to the negative two-thirds, but it's not x, it's x cubed plus x squared. So that means I'm not done. I still have to multiply by the derivative of x cubed plus x squared, which is three x squared plus two x. parentheses, I think I'm good. All right, f prime g minus g prime, this is all g prime, so I still have to multiply that by f. f is the numerator here, specifically it's 2x squared plus 3x squared. f prime g minus g prime f, done? No, when you're using the quotient rule, you have to divide by g squared. So I need this entire thing in purple here to get divided by Checking some parentheses here. 
Good. I have one extra open parenthesis if I did this right. So I can close that one here and divide by g squared. g is x cubed plus x squared to the one third power. So x cubed plus x squared to the one third power squared would be x cubed plus x squared to the two thirds power. This times this times this times this is the final answer for this derivative. Probably should have done some of this in orange instead of all of it in purple. Moving on, um, the next one here. Okay, so it's a lot easier if you do some algebra first. If you factor each of these different polynomials like I did here, you can cancel most of them out. And so I haven't done any calculus down. I get the square root of, the only ones that are left is x plus one squared. But the square root of x plus one squared is just x plus one. And the derivative of x plus one is just one. So if you do a whole lot of algebra and factor things out first, before you do any calculus, I haven't done any calculus until I get to this equal sign right here, it makes this problem a lot easier. If you don't see that, you can do chain rules, and inside the chain rule, you got product rules, and inside the product rules, you got quotient rules, and inside the quotient rule, you got a chain rule. Do I go through and write all those up? I mean, I guess I do. I'm supposed to be making solutions. So what you do is if you don't see it this way, you say my outermost layer in green is something to the one half power. If it were just x to the one half power, I'd say one half x to the negative one half. Um, but it's not, it's all this stuff. It's x squared plus five x plus four squared over x squared plus six x plus eight times x squared plus five x plus six over x squared plus seven x plus 12. So what that means, since it's not x, I leave all that stuff here. It's the g of f prime g when we're talking about the chain rule. But it also means I'm not done. It means I have to multiply this whole thing by the derivative of the inside part. Okay, so the derivative of the inside part. Um, good news and bad news, and mostly bad news. It's That derivative is a mess. Everything in red and blue here is what I have to take the derivative of. Um, it looks to me like a whole lot of product rules and quotient rules. Um, I would look at it as maybe a product rule. It's this times this. So this thing right here is f, this thing right here is g. So what I need to do is f prime times g plus g prime times f. So if I'm gonna use the product rule, the first thing I need to figure out is what is f prime. f prime is the derivative of this entire thing right here. To figure out the derivative of this entire thing right here, I'm gonna have to use the quotient rule. And for the quotient rule, I'll have to figure out the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the derivative of the bottom times the top over the bottom squared. So what I'm saying is I'm calling this entire thing f, and I'm using the product rule, and I'm saying the derivative of this entire thing is, let's see if I can do this, I'm gonna use a chain rule, and then I'm gonna use maybe in blue here, well, no, I'm gonna leave it all in red. Product rule, no, sorry. This is still part of the chain rule. So I'm trying to take the derivative of this thing. I recognize it's a quotient rule. The quotient rule tells me find f prime, the derivative of the top, which is what I have right here, and multiply that times the bottom, g, x squared plus six x plus eight. And then from that, subtract the derivative of the bottom, which is two x plus six, times f, the top, which is x squared plus 5x plus 4 squared, and then divide that entire thing by the bottom, x squared plus 6x plus 8 squared. What did I just do? All that work, if I could close these parentheses here, is to find f prime in this bigger product rule. So it's f prime, this thing, times maybe down here times g, g is leave this guy alone, x squared plus 5x plus 6 divided by x squared plus 7x plus 12. And then to that you wanna add g prime, the derivative of this thing, times f, this guy right here. I'll start by writing this guy because I don't have to take any derivatives, x squared plus 5x plus 4 squared 
over x squared plus 6x plus 8. In my f prime g plus g prime f, this is the f. And the g prime is going to be written right here. The bad news is in order to find g prime, the derivative of this thing right here, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. Quotient rule tells me that the derivative of this quotient is the derivative of the top, 2x plus 5, times the bottom, x squared plus 7x plus 12, minus the derivative of the bottom, 2x plus 7, times the top, x squared plus 5x plus 6, all divided by the bottom, where am I looking here, x squared plus 7x plus 12 squared. What I have in red here is a product rule, f prime g plus f g prime. It looks like a 12 there. I doubt that's supposed to be a 12. I think I just wrote a number accidentally. Uh, this is to the second power. You know it's bad when I can't even tell what I'm supposed to circle for my final answer. This thing right here, if you can read it, I can't, is the final answer. And in this case, this entire thing was the final answer. Okay, two to go. Um, another absurd problem. Uh, when you look at this, first thing I see is a quotient rule. I have something divided by something. When I'm using the quotient rule, it's f prime g minus g prime f divided by g squared. So what I'm saying is I'm going to use the quotient rule. f prime, the derivative of the top, is what I'll need to figure out. Um, the derivative of the top is the hardest part of this whole thing. The derivative of the top is chain rule inside chain rule inside chain rule. The outermost function is 2 raised up to some power. If it were just 2 to the x, it would be the derivative would be 2 to the x natural log of 2. But it's not 2 to the x. It's 2 to the 3 to the 4 to the x squared e to the x 5 to the x. So the derivative is 2 to all that mess, natural log of 2, times the derivative of what's left over here, 3 to the 4 to the x squared, all that stuff. So now what I have to do is take the derivative of the stuff that's left in red. 3 raised up to some power. Its derivative is 3 raised up to that power, 4 to the x squared e to the x, 5 to the x, natural log of 3. But then I'm not done. I got another chain rule inside there. Because this wasn't just 3 to the x, it was 3 to a bunch of stuff. So the next layer of the chain rule, written in blue here, is 4 raised up to a bunch of stuff. If it were just 4 to the x, it would be 4 to the x natural log of 4. But it's not 4 to the x, it's 4 to the x squared e to the x, 5 to the x. Okay, so I'm almost done. I just need to take the derivative of this stuff in orange. So I'm still multiplying all these guys together. The derivative of the stuff in orange, that is not orange, that is orange, um, is a product, right? x squared e to the x, 5 to the x. In fact, it's a product of three things. Product rule inside the product rule, what you'll end up getting is 2 to the x, or 2 times x, e to the x, 5 to the x, plus x squared e to the x, 5 to the x, plus x squared e to the x, 5 to the x, natural log of 5. What I wrote here in orange is the derivative of this thing. It's a product rule inside a product rule. You end up getting this. What I have now figured out is f prime if f is the numerator. Remember, I'm doing quotient rule. That's the big picture going on here. So I was working on the quotient rule. I needed to know f prime for the quotient rule. I just figured out f prime. What I now have to do is multiply that times g. g is the denominator x squared times x cubed times x to the fifth. You could leave it as x squared times x cubed times x to the fifth, or you get kind of clever and say, this is x to the tenth. You just add up those exponents. No calculus going on there. It's just my exponent rule. 2 plus 3 plus 5 is 10. f prime is all of this stuff. This is g. From that, I want to subtract g prime. Well, either that's product rule, inside a product rule, because I have three things, or if you get clever and recognize this is x to the tenth, its derivative is just 10x to the ninth. f prime g minus g prime times f, 2 to the 3 to the 4 to the x squared e to the x, 5 to the x. f prime g minus g prime f, 
all divided by g squared. Um, g is x to the 10th, x to the 10th squared is x to the 20th. This derivative is this mess here. One more to go. The tens problem. Tens written all over the place. Um, the first thing to notice is this is the derivative of a sum. It's the derivative of something plus something else. So what I have to do is take the derivative of the first thing and then add to that the derivative of the second thing. The good news, which is uncommon on this, these ridiculous problems, is that this second thing is just a constant. This is just a number. I know it looks like functions and product rules and chain rules and blah, blah, blah. This thing written in green here is just a number. There's no x's in here. The derivative of a number, I don't care what that number is, is 0. The derivative of this thing is 0. So what that means is I just have to figure out the derivative of this first guy. The derivative of this first guy, the outermost function, is something raised up to the 10th power. Using the power rule, I bring that 10 down in front. If it were x to the 10th, I'd say it's 10x to the 9th. But it's not x to the 10th, it's all this stuff to the 10th. So I copy all this stuff, 10x to the 10th plus 10e to the x over x e to the 10th. And those need parentheses to the 1 10th plus 10 divided by 10 minus e to the 10x divided by 10 to the 10x plus 10. God. Sometimes I think I'm funny when I'm making these problems, and then when I work them out, I realize I'm not that funny. Um, I just recopied everything. It's here. I took care of the stuff in green. Right? The stuff in green was this 10 here that I brought out in front using the power rule, and then plus 0 for all this stuff. But I'm not done. I have to use the chain rule. I still have to take the derivative of all this inside stuff. The next layer in here is written in red. And what we have in red is a quotient rule. So when I'm applying the quotient rule, what I want to do is take the derivative of the top, multiply that by the bottom, minus the derivative of the bottom, multiply by the top, divided by the bottom squared. Okay, so the derivative of the top. If I'm taking the derivative of the top, it's something plus something. Fortunately, this is just a constant, so the derivative is zero. So really, it's just this part that I have to take the derivative of. Using the power rule, I'll take that 1 tenth, sure, and bring that down in front. Leave all the stuff in blue alone. 10x to the 10th plus 10e to the x divided by x e to the 10th. Um, and then subtract 1 from the exponent to get to the negative 9 tenths power. This is f, no, it's not f prime. Um, I am working on figuring out f prime, the derivative of the top here. To figure out that derivative, you got to use the chain rule. The outside function of the stuff in red, I've done that. What I have to do now is multiply that by the derivative of the stuff in blue, about all this inside stuff. The derivative of all this inside stuff is going to, again, require a lot of rules. Um, it looks like a quotient rule. Derivative of the top is 100x to the 9th plus 10e to the x. And I want to multiply that by the bottom, x e to the 10th. And from that, I want to subtract the derivative of the bottom. Note e to the 10th is just a constant. x times a constant, the derivative is just e to the 10th. If this were x times 3, the derivative would just be 3. e to the 10th is just like 3. It's just a number. There's the derivative. f prime g minus g prime f, 10x to the 10th, plus 10e to the x, divided by the bottom, g squared. What I just figured out, this thing in red and blue right here, is f prime. It's the derivative of the top here. What I want to do is take that thing and multiply it by the bottom, all this mess here, and then subtract from that. I don't know where the hell I'm going to do this. Um, the derivative of the bottom times the top, and then divide the whole thing by the bottom squared. OK, so how the hell am I going to do this? Here's the derivative of the top. Multiply that by the bottom. I'm just going to copy it, 10 minus e to the 10x divided by 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10. That's all raised up to the 10th power minus 10. f prime g, and then from that I want to subtract g prime f. So after this, shh. 
we subtract. As a g prime, the derivative of the bottom. That's going to involve some chain rule stuff. Um, in red, I have a sum of two things, this stuff in red and a negative 10. So the derivative of the negative 10 is just 0. I just have to worry about the rest of the stuff in red. So I get, I bring the 10 down in front, and I leave everything else alone and raise it up to the ninth power. If it were just x to the 10th, it would be 10x to the 9th, but it's not. It's 10, all this mess, 10 minus e to the 10x divided by 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 to the 10th power. So its derivative is not just this, but this times the derivative of the inside part. So what I have to do is take the derivative of the stuff that's in blue. Uh, looks like a quotient rule, something divided by something. Um, so the derivative of the top, 10 is just a constant, its derivative is zero. The derivative of negative e to the 10x power is negative 10 e to the 10x power. F prime, multiply that times g, 10 10x plus 10 minus 10. From that, I want to subtract g prime. So now I'm taking the derivative of the bottom here. Oh, let's see. The derivative of negative 10 just goes away. The derivative of 10 to the 10x plus 10 power is a chain rule. The outside function is 10 to the x. So I do 10 to the 10 to the x plus 10 natural log of 10 times the derivative of 10x plus 10, which is 10. Um, what that is, f prime uh, ah, down here, f prime g minus g prime f. And inside that, I'm doing the derivative. I'm doing g prime down here. And so that's another quotient rule, f prime times g minus g prime, which is what I just did, times f, 10 minus e to the 10x, divided by um, the bottom, 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 squared. OK, where am I? Let's see. This was. I've already taken the derivative of the top. I multiplied that by the bottom that was here. And then from that, I wanted to subtract the derivative of the bottom, which is what I've written so far. And I want to multiply that by the top, 10x to the 10th plus 10e to the x. I'm just recopying what I see right here over x times e to the 10th, um, raised up to the 1 10th power plus 10. What I now have written is f prime g minus g prime f. That's not the end of the quotient rule. The quotient rule says you have to do all that and then divide by the bottom squared. So my quotient rule started right here. So this red parentheses that I've never closed closes right here so that I can now say divided by all this mess squared. How the hell am I going to write this? This a little bit neater, will that help at all? Gets divided by something squared. What's well, going to be squared? How about I do it this way? You're like, just finish up the video. This thing's taking an hour. Something squared. And what goes in this something right here is. Whew, 10 minus e to the 10x divided by 10. I have to start over. I have to write that over here a little bit. It's this. It, it's what's in the denominator here. It's this entire thing. I wish this. I my program would let me copy and paste. Um, it is 10 minus e to the 10x divided by. 10 to the 10x plus 10 minus 10 to the 10th minus 10. That entire thing squared is the denominator of this. 
and this entire weird snaking wrapping around thing, this times this minus this times this divided by this is my final answer. That's the derivative of this mess. Or at least I think it is. If I didn't screw something up, that's the derivative. It is definitely time to end this video, so I'm going to end it here.